Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. I would like to um, complete um, this chapter of the course, uh, which is related to units of measurements, with uh, the last lecture uh, about units which are used in um, research of atoms. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. Um, I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website because this lecture is part of the course and the course has menu on this website, sub-menu, etc. Everything is logically kind of uh, related to each other. Uh, plus, every lecture has textual part, so you can, at the, at the same time, you can watch the lecture and uh, follow um, along the notes. It's very complete notes, like textbook, basically. Um, plus, the course has uh, other kind of functionalities. For instance, uh, you can take exam in certain cases. Um, the, the study can be supervised, in which case you will have to sign in. But in any case, everything is free. Um, there are no advertisements, so you can just study yourself or under supervision, whatever. Okay, speaking about units used in um, physics of atom. Well, I will talk only about two units which are, well, generally speaking, um, are, are, are used. Everything else probably is more or less the same as all other parts of the physics. So the first unit I'm talking about is called unified uh, atomic mass unit. Unified atomic mass unit. Uh, sometimes, well, in C, usually it's just lowercase u. In um, uh, in older um, scientific articles, it's usually AMU, um, atomic mass unit. And sometimes it's DA, stands for Dalton. That's the name of yet another physicist who was very much contributing and uh, basically suggested to use this unit. So what is atomic mass unit, or rather unified atomic mass unit? Well, as far as the exact definition, it's one twelfth of the atom of isotope of carbon, carbon-12. Now, this is a precise definition. Why 1 twelfths uh, and why carbon uh, and why carbon-12? Okay, this is basically, again, um, first the physicists have decided that that would be something very convenient, but then they wanted to make it like a real science and they have a definition. So, what's the convenient thing? Convenient thing is basically to count how many protons and neutrons are in inside the atom's uh, nucleus. Obviously, it's a very important characteristic. So, you remember that number of protons and number of electrons is supposed to be the same, and that characterizes the pro main properties of the element. Number of neutrons usually exceeds the number of protons or equal to number of protons. And they needed to basically keep the nucleus together, these uh, neutrons. So basically, the number of protons and neutrons, it's like a weight, so to speak. Um, more precisely, atomic mass. However, how can we deal with this? Because uh, different um, uh, different elements have actually not only different uh, number of protons and neutrons, but number by itself is not really precise. Because, first of all, protons and neutrons, they are close in mass, uh, but not exactly the same. So we needed some precision. Okay, so how, how can we get to precision? Well, first of all, they have chosen uh, to use the carbon as extremely um, widely populated in, uh, in our environment element. Carbon-12 is something which is the most popular, uh, if you wish, um, mostly 
fre most frequently uh, most frequently occurring <laughs> um, isotope of carbon is like 98% of all the carbon on earth is carbon 12 and carbon 12 has six protons six neutrons and six electrons now electrons are very small so they're not really participating in the total weight but number of protons and neutrons is exactly 12 so if you will divide by 12 we will have um, the average basically it's an average mass of proton plus neutron over two right that's the average weight uh, average mass of uh, nucleon nucleon being either proton or neutron so that's why it's about one um, nucleon in mass and that's why it can be used for everything else and that means that c12 has exactly 12 unified atomic uh, mass units of, of measurement well because one unit is one twelfths so the whole thing is 12 units all right now how can we measure it in kilograms because the kilogram is actually the c unit now this is also kind of a mass but it's just a different unit of mass much more much much smaller obviously right so how can we figure out um, exactly now the help is from Avogadro number Avogadro number now you remember that Avogadro number is defined it's just a definition exact definition as 6.02214076 times 10 to the 23rd degree this is number of um, atoms in a mole of the uh, element now the mole is by definition is number of grams which corresponds to uh, its atomic uh, uh, its atomic mass right so one mole which means 12 gram exactly 12 gram because this is exactly 12 units of carbon 12 is one mole and this is 6.02214076 10 times 23 atoms okay so one atom weights how much 12 divided by this number 6 point blah 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 10 to the 23 this is one atom and one atom is 12 units now this is gram by the way this is gram 12 gram okay so one unit is what divided by 12 And this is grams, so we need kilograms, so it would be 1,000 uh, 1, uh, factor uh, in, in denominator. So that's basically what one unit is. Now, if you will divide it approximately, and this is approximately because this is a division. Division is not exact. When I put this number, this is exact number, this is a definition, basically, of a mole, right? Now, when I really dividing it and put it in decimal that would be a different number it would be 1.66053921 kilogram so this is one unified atomic mass in kilograms so the it's a straight direction just a just a n number just a factor oh sorry 10 to minus 27 27 because this is 10 to 26 in denominator so that's why it goes 10 to the minus something and 1 over 6 would be I, I multiply by 10 so that's why it's minus 27 
So it's 10 and that's 27 and that would be 1.6, blah, blah, yeah. Okay, so basically that's it about atomic mass unit or Dalton or unified atomic mass unit. That's how it is in kilograms. Okay, now what's next? It is used in atoms, which you might actually be interested in. Okay, next is unit of energy called one electron volt. So if you read about um, different researches, uh, energy which uh, atoms are exchanging uh, between uh, themselves, you might actually find that this energy is not measured in joules, as C actually prescribes. It's measured in electron volts. So what is electron volt? Okay. Now, imagine you have two points, A and B, and the difference, difference in potential is one volt. Now, we know what volt is. That was part of the previous units we were discussing. Everything has a definition, and the sequence of uh, lectures which I'm actually doing is exactly in, uh, uh, in the way so I can use something which has been already defined before to define something new. So, we have the difference in potentials between two points in space. Let's say it's an electrostatic field, for example, okay? It has obviously potential at some point, and difference in uh, uh, potential would be one volt. Now, what if you have an electron here at uh, rest? Now, let's assume that the difference in, in such I is in such a way that this uh, electron will go this direction. So let's say this is plus, and this is minus. Now, electron is minus, so it will go this direction it will, um, in vacuum, let's say, so it will gain certain speed, right? It will gain certain energy. So this energy which it gains by moving from a point A to point B, if the difference in potential is one volt, and this is, we are talking about one electron. So one electron will gain kinetic energy equals to one electron volt. So one electron volt, again, it's energy gained by electron moving from a lower potential to a higher potential. Um, and the difference in potential is one volt. Now, if el electron moves by itself, if this is plus and this is minus, this is one volt, which the field actually is, um, well, helping electron to, to, to move. If it's the other way around, if, if this is plus and this is minus, and by itself electron from here will not go there, because plus is attractive and minus is, which means if we want to move it, then we have to spend that energy. So the energy we spend to move it from uh, point to point should be equal to one electron volt. In any case, we have the um, uh, conservation of energy uh, law and this conservation of energy tells that somebody has to spend an energy. If you have to move from A to B, either the field spends or we spend against the field. All right, so we have defined what electron volt is. Now, how can we explain what's the relationship with joules, with units of measurements of the energy? So this is energy. So how can we r relate it to, to energy? energy or work, which is basically the same units. All right, so let's just think about it. Now, what is one volt? One volt was actually defined as uh, the difference in potential such that if we are moving one coulomb of electricity and we spend one joule of energy, then this is one volt of difference in um, uh, in difference in potential. Okay, so if we def if we move one coulomb um, across one volt, 
difference, we spent one joule of energy. Now, if we move one electron across the same distance, we will have something like a fraction of joule. Now, what is the fraction? Well, the fraction is how many electrons are in one coulomb, right? We are reducing the electric charge by certain factor, which means we have to reduce the work by the same factor. So what is this factor? How many um, uh, electrons are in one coulomb? Okay. Now, for this, we have a definition of coulomb. Now, from definition of Coulomb, if you will go to the lecture which is devoted to the units of measurements uh, of uh, electricity, you will see that one Coulomb is uh, such a measurement that one electron charge is 1.6021 three four no 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 it's not to one seven six uh -huh. seven six six three four times ten to the minus nineteen coulomb that's basically direct consequence from the definition of coulomb coulomb is actually ampere second ampere times second. That's what coulomb, one coulomb is. And one ampere was defined using the same constant. So basically that's what immediate consequence which um, I put in that lecture uh, that one electron is exactly this number of coulomb. Okay, basically that's, basically that's it. If this is the, the number uh, this is basically the ratio between electron charge and one coulomb. That means that uh, we have to define, we have to div divide um, uh, our one joule. Remember, one coulomb, one volt is one joule, right? So basically, since we reduce this to this, we have to reduce by the same number. So one electron volt is equal to this number six zero two one seven six six three four ten minus nineteen joules <coughs> so that's the connection between electron volt and joules and again physicists like to measure inner reactions um, between atoms uh, in electron volts, basically. So that that's basically the um, relationship to joules. This is measure of energy. For example, if you let's say if you break a nucleus of uranium, then parts are um, scattered around. Now they have certain energy. So the measure of energy is in electron volts. If you are talking about one particular atom. Okay. Now that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about units of measurements. Basically, I think it's um, l the last, I believe it's the last lecture of this course because uh, if I will think about something else, I'll add obviously. Um, mostly I'll probably add to um, exams, maybe some problems. But generally speaking, I have covered, I think, everything which. Um, which would be probably interesting for uh, the person who, who is studying physis, uh, physics, not on a professional level, but on a level of um, the person who really is interested in what, what exactly how our universe is made. Um, so um, then I will start some other probably uh, courses. I'm just thinking about maybe relativity or something like this, but that would be in the future. So thank you very much and good luck.